Hey! So guys, uh, this is a face reveal, and uh, we're doing a Sennheiser uh, unboxing, because fuck it, you know. This right here, sent from Sennheiser, for me to do a special unboxing for you guys. I hope everybody had a good Christmas. I sure as hell did. Here's one of my presents. I haven't opened this yet, it's been in my room for a couple weeks, and uh... I'm gonna open it. So guys, if you want to cop one of these headsets, you can actually go on the website, which is in the description of this video, please use that link. You can get 10% off, okay? 10% off if you use my code BLUEPRINT. That's a, that's a fucking cop right there. And these guys, these are, these are, these are some high quality people, okay? They, they make some, they make some good, good ass headsets. Good ass mics. They're, they're top quality. They're some A grade people. And I, and I highly suggest that if you're going to get a headset, you need like a, a good headset. Then you go, you go check them out, okay? What am I doing wrong here? I see. Fuck. Oh, that, that would be it. Okay, guys, as you can see, uh... I can't even get past the unboxing part, so... Look at that. Mm. Okay, so the top is off. Here, we have the headset. Looking fucking stylish, dude. Ooh, damn. How do I make this work? So it does come with a mic. Uh, you can't really take it off unless... I don't think you can even, like, screw it off. Yeah. So you can't take off the mic, but that's okay. Um, I'm probably not going to use the mic. I'm just going to keep using, you know, uh, that mic. Uh, I am going to test the mic in this video. So I'm going to, I'm going to connect it. And I'm going to use this mic, and I'm going to see what the difference is and all that. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Look at that. You can take off the, uh, or like move them down, you know, for like big ass heads. Okay, that's way too big. Oh damn. So this is the GSP 500, uh, not the 600. The 600 uh, has a closed thing right there, right, right there. You see where those the the open openness, the grate is. Uh, that makes it so you can hear outside better, and I kind of like that. Uh, I don't like the closed headset. So there is a closed one. The GSP 600 is the one with the the closed back. Okay, I need to figure out how to like wear this because I'm not doing so hot right now. It's kind of strange like this. I feel really odd. Maybe that's because I'm just used to this headset, $100 headset, you know, that I've been wearing. Something definitely needs to be adjusted. You know? So right away, I felt a lot of irritation right below my ears and immediately was feeling a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe it's gonna take some getting used to. Okay, so I'm gonna figure out how to hook this up. There's a little box at the bottom here. Um, okay, so there is wires for the headset there. Some more wires. Uh, yeah, these are just manuals. Uh, this is not English. Connecting the headset. You put that into that and that. Compatible with Xbox One. So it is compatible with consoles, obviously. Oh, okay, what is this? So there's like a thing right here, some kind of lever right right there. What does that do? Oh. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if it does anything. Contact pressure. Okay. So you can mute audio on this side. Oh. Okay. So yeah, you can just this this twists. So this is audio right here. That's kind of cool. Console cable. This is the console cable. That one with the with the edge like that, and this is the, the PC cable. So I'm gonna hook this up, and uh, we'll try it out, and then we'll do the Q and A. Get this piece of shit headset out of here. Okay, here we go. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh my head, dude. What the fuck is that? This headset, no mas, okay? Okay, so let's uh, let's put that over there. You go to the other side of this wire, and then you put it in the hole. Pretty self-explanatory, I think. You just put it in there. All right, it's pretty dark back there, so I'm gonna get a flashlight. 
This shit is dusty as fuck. All right, so I actually have two input things on the top of my piece on my chassis here. Oh, ooh. I'm getting something here, I'm getting something. All right, so the mic is in. Which device did you plug in? Uh, the mic and the headphone. Okay, headphone. Stereo. What is this? I've never seen this in my life. Let's see if it works. Something's up with this. Like, this this shouldn't like be digging into my my face. I feel like. Am I just have I just been wearing headsets wrong my whole life? Something's wrong here. Something is definitely wrong here. Real tech. That's not it. It's like not even plugged in or something. Yeah, that sounds shit. So, yeah, okay, I'm doing something wrong. I'm gonna plug this into the back, see if that does it. I have never used jacks before. Do I've it. only used USB. No, this is not even what I'm look- No, I don't want speakers, fuck's sake. So I had no idea what I was doing. Am I fucking stupid? I was fumbling around with all this shit for about Hello? an hour. Until Hello? finally I got my dad in here. And he was able to figure it out. Basically, I've been plugging in, plugging it in everywhere. Okay, I know why you're getting audio, and why this thing. This is probably when you phones, no jack, information available. It's like actual like. Do you want me to unmute the speaker that was playing the sound through that? That was like really poor. Yeah, let's hear what that sounds like. You can hear that now, right? Actually, sounds pretty good. Really? Let me hear that. It's really quiet. Well, turn it up. It is fully turned up. Well, I was filling with this. Turn that. What did we do? Right? <laughs> that, well, it's working now. Oh, thanks, man. Too much, and they feel like they're slipping off. Too little, and they're just on. They're just cutting into your face. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can hook up the audio here. Recording. Uh, okay. Hello. <laughs> Holy shit. That is much worse. You know, it's actually not bad though for like, oh, what's it called? Uh, uh, a headset mic. So, uh, I don't think I'm gonna put you guys through the pain of hearing this, but if I flip this down and it works again, right? Well, I mean, fuck. I guess that works. So I'm gonna disable this again, and then we're gonna go back to my other head, I mean, my other mic. Okay, yeah, the headset, uh, the headset mic here definitely has some backdrop. A lot of noise in the background, a lot of shh. All right, we got rust here. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna put on my gaming glasses here, okay? No, but actually, like, I actually kind of get sick if I look at the screen too long with all my glasses. It's fucking, you know. They also have built-in ESP. Right when I loaded in game, I noticed how different everything was. Keep in mind, I've never really heard high definition audio. I've never really had a super expensive headset. So as soon as I heard this, I didn't know what to think of it. It's so quiet and awkward. Audio. Alright, well I guess this is what you call high definition audio, so I guess we're just gonna run with it. Guys, I've either gotten so used to crap audio that I think it's better than everything in the world, or good audio is just dog shit. It's one of the two, and I'm betting my money on the second one. And it kind of blows because I like other Sennheiser products, I like their other headsets. My dad has one. And I think it, I think it's a good headset. The sound, it's 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 different. It's just I don't like it as much as I like the other headset. It's not that it's too heavy. It's just too tight. There's nothing here that adjusts that. This doesn't do anything. This thing on the top, pulling pulling it down just makes it worse.
What? I hit him twice? This thing doesn't shoot straight at all. Look at how bad that is. All right, I'm done with this. Like, I'm actually done with this. I, I can't, I can't, I can't play with this headset. It is worse than my other headset. And maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm not used to this headset. Maybe I'm not used to like this different type of sound, but what I can tell you is that this sound is completely different than the other sound. That's a $100 headset, $200, $250 headset. The sound, in my opinion, is way worse. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I have to. It's an ex it's a much more expensive headset. It's from an it's from a much more expensive brand. Sennheiser makes is supposed to be making amazing audio microphones and headsets. Maybe it maybe it has something to do with me. It must be on my end. So I'm gonna move on to the QA now without the headset. Um because I don't like it. So I gave you guys a, a I unboxed it for you, and I gave you guys my honest review, and I showed gameplay of it. I don't know if you guys hear the same thing I do, probably, but I just don't like it. So I'm going to get into the Q&A now, so let's, let's get into it. Hey guys, I just wanted to say that the headset itself feels and looks very professional. Maybe I've just gotten used to my current headset, since I have had a Cloud 2 before my Alpha Cloud. So I've been using HyperX for a while now, and I guess I must have just gotten used to that sound. So maybe that's the reason that this particular Sennheiser headset isn't for me. So I'm going to be giving it away. Maybe it needs an amp. Sennheiser just recently came out with one of those, but I reviewed it as is. Maybe it fits your head better. Maybe you prefer the sound it gives you. Either way, if you want the headset, I want you to tell me why you do in the description. Start off by saying I want the Sennheiser headset because, and whichever comment I like the most, I'll reply back to you. You can send me your Discord, and we can have a chat about how I'm going to send it to you. Thank you guys so much for 180,000 subscribers. We're this close to 200k. That is incredible. And also, happy holidays. Thanks so much for watching this video. It really means a lot since it wasn't really a Rust-focused video. You guys are the real MVPs for making this far. So let's get on with what everyone's waiting for, the Q&A. Alright, our first question is from Glitch Out Gamer. He says, is it hard to maintain uploading with school? So, um, I do all my homework at, at school. I try, you know, when most kids are like, I'll just do it at my house, you know. I work extra hard to do as much homework as I possibly can at school. And usually I succeed and I don't have any homework ever. I usually never have homework at my house. And that way I can just focus on, uh, either getting clips or editing. I usually do editing on Wednesdays because I get out early on Wednesdays. I get out around 12.50 when most days I get out at 250 so I have that extra two hours to uh, to edit is it hard um yeah kind of but you know I work I work at it and it works all right this is from lean bow 0001 he says I honestly don't know how you manage to motivate yourself to keep going after getting all the gear and then getting offline rated how do you always keep such a positive mindset in literally a merciless environment I play I record footage and by Wednesday or by Monday, I mean, uh, I have all that footage I need. And to me, the game itself doesn't matter as much as the video I'm going to make. So if I get clips within that week, I don't care what happens after because it's just going to wipe anyway. So as long as I get clips, I feel like I've done a successful wipe. Do you plan on going to university or pursuing online content? Um... Well, uh, I'm definitely going to plan on going to college, um, something that involves uh, game, not gaming, but um, video production and editing and all that, Photoshop, uh, graphic design and stuff like that. Because I do want a backup plan in case my channel goes under and Ross dies or whatever, or I can use that, you know, what I learned from the university or college and I can use it to enhance my, my, my content. You do YouTube and streaming as a full-time job. If yes, did you had another job before you start doing full-time YouTube and stream? Just, I've just been doing YouTube for fun and it turns out being, you know, I've actually been making some decent money off of it. I never planned to be making money off of it, but I mean, I I was just doing it for fun at first and I, I still am, you know, I'm, I'm not really doing it for the money because once again, I'm only 15, but 
you know, it's actually really good to be making this early on so I can use it later in life. This is from Elias Nilsson, I think is how you say his name. Uh, are you planning to play another game sometime? Not that I don't like Rust, one of my favorite games, but of course it would be fun to see you play something else. Not Fortnite, please. Obviously I'm not gonna play Fortnite, but I do play games, other games. I play Overwatch, um, I played a little bit of Clatter, uh, I play Insurgency uh, sometimes. Um, I usually go on and off. I usually, have my, I usually have my main game, which is Rust, obviously, and then I have a side game, which is currently Overwatch. But I'm not gonna upload videos, other games that I play, because no one will watch that. I feel like the only time I'd upload a different video is when Rust dies, and the game that killed Rust is what replaces it. Then I'll start uploading that video. But that's not happening anytime soon, at least. Uh, all the recent games that have been trying, like Fallout 76, failed miserably. So, you know, until then. This is from Liam, and he has some shotgun questions. Favorite color? Favorite food? I like Italian food. Uh, I love pasta. I love pizza. Uh, I mean, who doesn't, you know? Someone say food? Yes. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I love fish sandwiches. These are really good. No. Oh. All right, that was really good. Editing software, I use Sony Vegas 14 right now. What inspired me to begin YouTube? Uh, just watching other YouTubers. I started as a Minecraft channel and uh, slowly I watched other survival game videos and I watched a Rust video and you know, I just started making Rust videos. What got you into Rust? Um, the first Rust video I think I watched, or at least the first Rust videos, were um, partially royal. I think I watched his Rust videos, and it got me really interested, and I started moving into like Zuckles and Frost and people like that, and that what that's what made me, you know, play the game. My sister bought me Rust for my birthday back, way back, and I played it for like a couple hours, and I hated it because I played the Battle Royale server, and I thought that was the whole game, but um... After watching those videos, I was like, oh, there's a lot more to it, and I got back into it, and I enjoyed it. Zuru has two questions for me. He asks, what servers do you play on, and what are your graphics settings? I server hop a lot. I tend to avoid uh, easy, like, solo duo trio and community servers, and I never play modded servers, but I play most officials and some community servers. What are your graphics settings? Um, if you go to my Twitch and you type the command exclamation mark settings, it'll tell you It'll send you a clip uh, of me checking my graphic settings on, on live stream. How long have you been playing Rust since? Uh, well, I've been playing Rust since ladder hatches were added, if that's what you were asking. So way back in the blueprint system is when I started playing Rust. Firebubble asks, how old are you? Um, I am 15, turning 16 in January. Tommy D asks, have you ever had a pet? If so, what was its name and what was it? Just wondering because I do like animals. Where do I start, man? Uh, have I ever had a pet? Yes, I've had many pets. I've had uh, a dog named Dash. I've had a dog named Maverick. Um, I've had two cats, one named Luna and one named Elma. They were twins. One was fat, one was skinny. One yelled at us all the time, one was really quiet. And now I have a dog named Dobby, which is a French Bulldog Boston Terrier mix, and he's the best. <sighs> This, this is my, this is my dog. <laughs> hey, there he is. Hey, Tommy. Uh, I also have a dog named Shadow, and he is a uh, Akita Black Lab mix. I have, well, I had two cats. I had one cat named Kato. He was killed by my dog Shadow. Um, I also have the remaining cat Nora and she is a whack job. Here's my cat. She's just a cat, you know. There's nothing that really, you know, you can't really go wrong with a cat. They're just fuzzy little things that don't care about you, but they live with you anyway. Okay, that's enough of that. Well, to be honest, I'd recommend HyperX. I mean, they're kind of cheap and they're good headsets. Who was your first long lasting friend you met from Rust? Okay, so the first people I ever met in Rust were a couple of guys from a compound. I th one of them was named Smashbot? Smashbox? I don't know. 
I don't remember his name, but I remember I was walking up a, a giant mountain and these two guys were at the top of it and they're like, hey man, how you doing? And you know, I was like, hey, uh, can I base with you guys? And I'm like, sure. They brought me to their huge ass compound and I made some shitty little base in there. It had uh, wooden foundations because I thought they looked better than stone and they, the whole wooden foundations got raided. I didn't know how ceilings worked, so I placed floor frames and I put grates in them. Uh, because I didn't know that you could just place the ceilings. I tried placing large furnaces on my roof. I had no idea what I was doing, but they helped me a lot um, with all that. What is your favorite weapon in Rust? Um, probably the SAR. Right now I'm not feeling the SAR at the moment, but um, I think that overall the SAR is the most balanced weapon in the game. Um, it's got decent damage, it's got 16 bullets in the mag, the range isn't bad, it's kind of cheap, it's common, and you know, it's just all around a pretty decent weapon. I'd have to say my favorite SMG is the Tommy. My favorite uh, rifle is the LR. Favorite pistol is probably, I'm gonna go with Python. From Max Dove, he says, will your channel be primarily Rust or will you play other games? And would you ever duo with bigger Rust channels like Surge, Aqua Rust, or Winter? Well, like I said earlier, um, it, my channel is gonna stay Rust until a game like Rust comes out and kills Rust. That's when I'm gonna start playing that game and then I'll start uploading that game because most likely all the people who play Rust are gonna switch to that game too. And naturally all the people who watch Rust are gonna start watching that game instead. So that's when I'll start uploading other content that isn't Rust, unless if it's some other random, you know, survival game that's hot and that, that's like Rust, you know. And as far as other Rust channels, like big channels, uh, that's totally up to them. I'm totally open to playing with other channels like Surge and Aqua and Sir Winter. I'm totally up for playing with people like that. We know the answer to the first question, but how, where am I from? I'm from California. Superior Hawk asked, what is snowballing? Well, snowballing is when you start off really small with almost nothing and slowly without farming any resources, you gradually make your way to the top tier weapons. So say you go from a rock, you rock to death some guy with a spear and with that spear, you kill someone with a bow and with that bow, you kill someone with a pipe. With the pipe, you kill someone with an AK, you know, etc. And eventually it just leads up to this, to this grand finale of like raiding a base. The dream white basically is what a snowball is. Mr. Pulio asks, what has been your biggest accomplishment on YouTube so far? I think that my biggest accomplishment on YouTube so far is that 100,000 milestone. That was big. Like it felt so good hitting that milestone and, and yeah, I worked so hard for it, but at the same time, it was like, I never really expected that would happen. I was always just kind of doing YouTube for fun and suddenly I'm just starting to blow up and my, my channel is just skyrocketing. There's all these subscribers now and it's kind of crazy to think about that I have more subscribers than, you know, some places on earth. Like, and it's, it's amazing to think that every single person that has subscribed to me has like their own life and it's like an actual person it's really crazy oh, now we have over 180,000 people subscribed so definitely my biggest accomplishment was all this growth over this past year really over these past months so this year has been really good for my channel nico lego asks why does your logo look like the tiktok logo with the glitch effects etc i think the real question is why does the tiktok logo look like my logo Dad asks, how much can you bench press? I can tell by your voice, it's around 185 to 205. Fuck no, man, I can barely do 45. I can barely do a plate on each side. So I can do around like like 115, like right, that's like weak shit. But it's odd because I could do 35 reps of 95. So that means something, right? If YouTube wasn't a thing, what would you do? That's a good question, because I honestly have no idea. Um. Most likely, I would just be playing Minecraft, really, because that's the only thing people tell me about. Like, that's the only thing that's being announced. If YouTube didn't exist, you wouldn't get exposure to a lot of games, and I wouldn't know Rust existed. I wouldn't be playing Rust, I would be playing Minecraft, and who knows what I would be playing after that. I would be playing CSGO, Ark, those are the games I would be playing because those are the games that people most talk about, PUBG. Fortnite, I would be playing those games because that's all people talk about at school. People don't talk about Rust at school. StringedBean059 asked me, if you could tell Rust Dubs anything, what would it be? They really need to change nighttime. And I'm just being honest here, like, I get it. This Dark Knight adds a lot of immersion to the game and it 
it makes it like a lot ch more challenging and a lot harder um it's like when it's becoming night you have to get to your base if you don't have a torch or a flashlight you need to get to your base because then again the torches and flashlights just give away your position and put a target on your back for some guy with a sniper rifle half a mile away nighttime is death in that game and that is kind of cool at first but later when you get used to the game it just becomes this annoyance it becomes tedious and it's like Oh man, it's becoming night. I have to hide in my base and I have to do nothing for 15 minutes. It's just unplayable right now. When it's nighttime, it is unplayable. Also, uh, ladders need to be a default BP. Weapon and flashlight needs to be a default BP. All of the things you get from barrels need to be removed and they need to be default BPs and you need to get more components from those barrels. Electricity system needs to be reworked. Right now, I think it's causing a lot of FPS lag. And it think, I think for the people who actually want to try out the electricity system, it's really unfair that they have to find all these components. Yeah, that was a good question. Okay, Gamma asks, what's the best way in your opinion to get better at Rust? Well, there's two things. One is a lot of practice and just continuing to really learn the game and just getting immersed in um, really how to play, um, all the mistakes that you make, that's what how you learn. But another thing that really is important is that um, watch other YouTubers. If you just simply watch somebody play, you learn a lot. That's that's how I learned. How many hours do you have on Rust? I currently have more than 4,000 hours in Rust. Actually, I'm gonna calculate that right now. If I stopped doing everything in life and I played Rust for 166.6 repeating days straight, that's how long I've been playing Rust. Half a fucking year worth of hours, dude. Fuck me. And to think that people like Ace Shun and Trousy and like that guy with like 26,000 hours in Rust, to think that they spent even more than that is just really crazy. It just goes to show how addicting Rust can be. Joseph Hatcliffe asks, why don't you upload more? Well, I mean, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. So if I'm playing a wipe, which is usual, I start on Thursday, I play, well, in order to get enough footage, in order for me to actually have fun, I have to play until at least Monday. And if I'm having a lot of fun, I'll continue playing to Tuesday. And then on Tuesday, that's when I have to start editing. And I want to make sure that I finish the video before Thursday. That way, I don't have all these extra clips lying there and they get in the way of my next week when I play again. What is your real name? A lot of people already know my name is Aiden. So, you know, if you want to start calling me that, then fuck it. So this might be kind of like jumping back to another question, but Janster5001 asks, Why did you start playing Rust instead of Fortnite or CSGO or PUBG, etc? You get the point. Well, I mean, the main reason that I play Rust, the main reason I love and I love Rust and the main reason it's my favorite game is because there is no other game out there that's like Rust. The first game that comes to mind when I think of another game like Rust is Ark. And that's still not even close. I just can't think of really any game. There's like Miscreated, I guess. Um, DayZ. But still, they come nowhere near as good as Rust. Rust is the only game that's out there that has this survival game that has some of the best building mechanics I've ever had, I've ever used. I mean, it's just so simple, yet it's it's really um, it's really in depth. You can create some really cool base designs and think outside of the box. In most games, like a miscreated, you get like a couple of walls and a foundation. It's going to be really, really hard to beat Rust because Rust has been in development for four fucking years. It's just, I can't really see it like dying to, because of another game, you know, kicking its ass. Because the only thing I'd see Rust dying is when the survival genre dies. And that's not going to happen. So I guess we'll see in the upcoming years how it's going to go. But right now, it's, it's, it's got steady, slow growth. Um... So hopefully it just continues that way, you know? Anyways, guys, that's it for this, um, this q and I'm gonna end it right here. Um, I answered a bunch of questions, but I don't want to answer, like, too many. There's a lot here. You know, it's gotta end at some point, so. I hope you guys all had a very good Christmas. I had a great Christmas. So yeah, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.